Hey everyone, it's Chow here. So we're going to go over RNA processing, which is just a very interesting, interesting little concept that happens between transcription and translation. Uh, I actually want to thank Dr. Leckler because he's the one who made these slides, but I thought it would be a good idea to just go over the information once again to see whether you have a basic grasp of it. So this is the very, very 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 easy basic version of RNA processing but I think it'll be good to just go over it and see whether you know for sure what's going on so let's begin so for starters before you actually do the whole RNA processing thing you need to make a strand of RNA so in our case we're talking about mRNA or messenger RNA and we go through that scary scary concept called transcription where we actually Wow, something just fell off my desk. Oh, well. Okay, I'm alive and well. Uh, so let's start, by, let's return to our concept of, oh my goodness. Okay, so let's start with transcription. So obviously in order to make an mRNA strand, to process it, you need to build it in the first place. And how do you build it? Well, you use RNA polymerase and a lot of these different proteins that we talked about in past chapters and you create the strand, in our case, of mRNA. Now this is pre-mRNA, it's not been edited yet, so it's still got almost all of the materials and base pairings from the original DNA strand. So as you can see, this reddish section here, this reddish section here, this reddish section here, and the blue sections, they're all there. So it's very similar to the original DNA strand. But we're gonna change that. Now, before we actually go on to make certain changes, there are some things that can occur. For instance, we can have a situation where we can cap the mRNA, and that's something that's very important. Usually what happens is you have this methyl group that's added on to the seven position of the guanines at the five prime end of the mRNA strand. Remember, this is still pre-mRNA. Now what's really interesting is that when it comes to mRNA processing or just RNA processing in general, you can actually have processing occur during translation or transcription, excuse me, and it can be co-transcriptional or it can be post-transcriptional. It can be something that occurs after transcription. So that's something to very importantly keep in mind. Now remember, mRNA processing is not exactly transcription. It's not part of transcription because transcription is just simply the creation of an, of an RNA strand based on a DNA strand. So, all right, that makes sense. You have this capping of the five prime end of the mRNA. You don't really need to know the details about here. Just know that there is a methyl group that's added on the seven position of guanine. So that's great. So moving on, we have some other things that we probably should talk about. So now we have a far prime cap added on to our mRNA strand. Okay, that's pretty good. But there are other things that we can also edit in our pre-mRNA strand, including these little things called exons and introns. Now, exons are generally what's known as sequences of DNA that actually have codings, certain codings that are needed for creation of a certain protein. Introns, however, are what's sometimes known as the more or less non-coding regions of the mRNA strand. So because they're not really necessary, we have to find a way to get rid of them. So that's what happens. You actually have instances where the introns are removed and the exons are then stitched together. So this is known as RNA splicing, where you have the introns, the blue sections here in this case, get removed and then the red sections, which are the exons, excuse me, that actually code for certain proteins, that actually code for polypeptides that we actually want, those are gonna get stuck together and spliced together. So that's pretty great. This is still technically in the pre-mRNA stage because the strand actually lacks something else. And that thing it lacks is, of course, a polyadenylation at the tail end. So there's going to be some cleavage and whatnot that's happening, and there's also going to be adenines, usually around 300 bases of adenine, that are added onto the 3' end of the molecule. So that's really cool. 
So that basically kind of sums up the concept of mRNA processing. And just, I guess, something else to talk about is this idea of codons, which are just sort of three base pairs of bases that are used to help code for certain amino acids on complementary anticodons on the transfer RNAs. But that's something that we're really going to talk about in the future. For now, just know that there are start codons that occur after sort of this 5' prime cap, and there are stop codons that occur kind of before this polyadenylation signal at the 3' prime end. And what's really cool is that the translated region that we're actually going to use to make a polypeptide out of is this section of uh, DNA, or excuse me, of RNA that's actually between the start codon and the stop codon. So this is RNA over here, and the translated region, again, is this region between the start codon and the stop codon. Notice that there are sections of exons that are actually not within the translated region. So that's something else to, be, to, to just kind of keep in mind. And finally, once the whole strand is finished, this is what's known as mature mRNA. Mature mRNA is very good because it's got a 5' prime cap, it's got a 3' prime uh, end uh, poly A tail, and what's really great about it is that now you have the start codons and stop codons and this translated region that your body actually wants translated into a protein. And so that's what actually gets pushed to sort of the nuclear pore complex of your nuclear envelope and that's going to eventually leave into the cytoplasm where it can find itself a, a nice little ribosome and get the whole process of translation started. But that's for a different, different topic, of course. One other thing to keep in mind, of course, is that while it is in general, mRNA processing generally doesn't occur in bacteria. It's kind of a questionable statement because there are exceptions as always. Uh, and likewise, you can say that there are instances too where mRNA processing doesn't occur in eukaryotes either. Um, but in general, mRNA processing does not occur in bacteria. So that's just kind of a, a side note that I guess I should put in. So this pretty much sums up RNA processing. I hope you all found this video helpful and uh, good luck studying as always.